What's going on everyone? This is Cadman Cycling. Welcome in. Hope you're having a great day. This is the Alp de Zwift 3R KOM race. A total of 17.6 kilometers. It'll take us up the Alp de Zwift for a full elevation gain of 1047 meters. Definitely the most I've ever seen in a race or in a ride overall. This will be my first race up the Alp de Zwift. Figured it would be a good training ride. We'll be following the road to the sky route within Watopia. So it's the shortest route up the Alp in the game. About five kilometers of a lead in with no elevation gain. And then we hit the Alp, which is about 12.2 kilometers and an average grade of 8.5% along 21 hairpin turns. So. This is the famous one based on Alpe d'Huez in southeastern France. Um, this one in Watopia. So we start in the jungle pens. A lot of downhill, a lot of flats for the first five, five and a half kilometers. So really, the speed shouldn't be too high here. Um, this being my first race up the Alp, the last thing I want to do is kind of burn myself out early on. So. I won't push as hard to stay with the front pack. I really won't concentrate on staying with any pack if it means I'm putting out more power than I want to or than I'm comfortable with. Just because I know once we hit the Alp, uh, this race will really break apart. So there won't really be any groups staying together for the full climb. It'll just become more of an FTP or a little bit under FTP effort as the climb will take a little bit more than an hour. At this point, I haven't been up the Alps, so I'm not sure exactly how long. I believe for a one hour climb up the Alp, you have to average about 3.2 watts per kilogram. I can average that for about a 20 minute race, but not for a full hour. So I'm ex definitely expecting 60 plus minutes. I uh, just don't know how many minutes to add on. Will it be 70, 80, 90 minutes? We'll see. So. We're now five kilometers into the race, and this is the start of the Alp de Zwift. So I'm riding a climbing setup, uh, different from all of my other races. I switched just before the race uh, to the Trek Amanda frame, and then the wheel set is the NV SES 3.4. So climbing frame, climbing wheel set, just trying to do everything to lower the weight as much as possible. I'll go ahead and skip forward a little bit just to get an idea of how these hairpins work. Um, and it's a nice setup that they add onto Zwift for this climb. So on the right hand side, it shows overall where you are in the climb with the next three or four segments. Uh, so just a bit of a detailed map. And then on the left hand side, it tracks your sector stats for each segment between the hairpin turns. And that really helps uh, to maintain a steady pace. So you can see kind of what your heart rate has been for the last few minutes during a segment. You can see where your average power sits just to make sure you don't go all out at the start and then kind of die at the end or just to track your progress over time. If you notice your power starts dropping or your heart rate starts increasing, it may be good to kind of slow it down a bit, uh, hit a more steady power that you'll be able to maintain throughout the climb as it is over a 60 minute effort. So this Alp to Zwift Road to the Sky route, I believe is available for anyone over level six in Zwift. It's based on the Alp de Wes route. Like I said, it's a, it's a ski resort town in Southeastern France. And it's actually been a, regularly been included in the Tour de France. So. A famous route that they added to Watopia is we make our way around the first turn. That's number 21, and now we're on to segment 20, just starting to count down the turns. It's definitely nice and a long climb to have the opportunity to at least look forward to something uh, like short segments during the climb. It's tough if it's a full hour climb and there's really nothing to look forward to. Here you get to look forward to the next few minutes to the next hairpin. So went ahead, skipped forward. We're now about halfway through the climb, been riding for 40 total minutes. 
currently on the 10th segment, making our way to the 10th hairpin. Like I said, this is my first race up the Alp, so I haven't made this climb before. I really just wanted to stay focused on maintaining a steady power. I kept it pretty easy for the first five kilometers before we hit the climb, and I felt all right getting to the start. Uh, I think everyone was actually taking it pretty easy, just you know what you have in front of you, so don't wanna waste all your energy uh, early on in the race. So I started the first few hairpins above 200 watts, uh, somewhere about halfway through. My average power started getting a little bit below 200 watts. Uh, heart rate wasn't crazy high, but I was just trying to, at this point, maintain it between segments. So about halfway through, looks like my average power is kind of around that 190 watt range for the last few segments. And heart rate has been pretty even in the low 180s, so feeling pretty good. Um, but definitely realizing how long this ride will be. I think a lot of my races are, are shorter. This is short in terms of distance, but the climbing just adds a lot of time. Um, about halfway through the climbing as well, so at 525 meters, this total race has just over 1050 meters, so about exactly halfway through, even though we only have 6.4 kilometers left, there's a lot of time left here, so. And really drafting isn't a big deal in this race. Uh, the group is really blown to pieces, so we'll see a few riders here and there. Ultimately, it's more of a, almost like a time trial effort is how I found it. Um, just a little bit below FTP, trying to find a good wattage that I can keep for the majority, up the, majority of the way up the hill. So we'll go ahead and skip forward in a little bit, just kind of making our way to the ninth hairpin here. And now we're getting to the top. So we are on the last segment. We made the last hairpin turn at 250 meters, but definitely too early to start sprinting. Uh, there's a rider 25 seconds ahead of me, another rider 28 seconds behind me. So not contesting any any finish here no reason to sprint but just putting in a good effort to see what my final time is uh, like i said this is all about just setting a benchmark and really proving that everyone can make it up the alp um, and it, it's something to just work towards getting better if you set your first time all of a sudden you have something to work towards so whether it's your first time you're very new to riding your first time up the alp um, and it takes a couple of hours. Uh, just get off the bike a few times, kind of catch your breath, jump back on the bike. Uh, it can be a long ride, but really that first time up is always going to be the hardest. And it setting a time at the top really puts your eyes on something to, to work for and get better at. So if you've never done the Alp, uh, I would definitely recommend just give it a shot. Um, kind of take a day, a morning, sometime you have a lot of time to ride, um, and just get a first time in there, and then start training, see see if you can get better in a couple of months. Uh, it doesn't matter what the time is overall, whether it's 50 minutes, whether it's four hours, uh, it's all about just improving as a rider. So first time up the Alp for me, a time of 74 minutes and five seconds up the Alp, 82 minutes for the full race. So just under an hour and 15 to get up the Alp. Uh, definitely that hour is a good threshold. Uh, I have a long way to get there. Average 2.6 watts per kilogram here. I think it's around 3.1, 3.2 to hit that hour threshold. So as I train and, and get better, that's something to work towards. But overall, pretty happy with this first climb. It feels good to get it out of the way, to be honest. But just trying to continue to build endurance. And I think this was a good ride to do it, plus working my way to the Tron. So adding some climbing meters so thanks for sticking in here i appreciate you being here and until next time this is cadman cycling and i'll catch you on the next one bye <laughs>